Oh, we are rocking today. <laughs> yay, yay. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. So I've been uh, very mindful all week of our seven practitioner candidates going to Raleigh to be paneled. Last Saturday, their practitioner candidates came here and we paneled them. And uh, that's why John is staying over to, uh, to speak at Raleigh. That's kind of our deal, that he'll stay over and do the Sunday talk after the panels. But I've, I've been thinking about what I want to say to those candidates, to say to those licensed practitioners, newly licensed practitioners now. And, and so I've formulated my talk around that, but it's really true for all of us. And I decided to call it finding your place, creating your place, making your place. How do we have a place in the world? That's a, a picture from NASA of the big blue marble planet Earth from space. And from this perspective, it looks like a pretty big world. And some of us can, in our newness of either becoming a licensed practitioner or moving somewhere or starting a business or going into a relationship or doing pretty much <coughs> anything in life, waking up in the morning, where is our place in this? How do I have a place in the world? How do I make my place in life? And I know some people think that, that when you're born, you're born into a, a path, whether it's a, a karmic path or whether it's a um, nurturing, that this is your biological family, this is your circumstances in life, this is going to be your pathway in life. But I don't think that's true because for me, had I followed the pathway in life that looked like I should have been on, first of all, I would not be alive at this moment, and secondly, I would not have found that presence of the divine within me because there was nothing in my world to offer me that as an option. I had to go find it and get it and bring it to life on my own. So I get this feeling that, that as the, the child emerges into the physical plane, that that kid's on their own, that we are on our own in terms of what is our life going to be. And we can have uh, great circumstances, we can be born into great wealth, and still have a disastrous life. We can be born into great love and still have a disastrous life. And we can be born into the hardest circumstances imaginable and still create a great life. I figure that our life is up to us. It's up to us to find our place. It's up to us to create our experience of livingness. And sometimes people say, well, why in the world do we have to have all of this suffering and struggling? You know, we're, we're, we're the point of awareness of the infinite in us, as us, is us now. Why in the world don't we just show up on planet Earth and everything is bliss and joy? My answer is always, I don't know. You gotta take that up to a higher level to ask, which probably would be you. Why do you have to have so much struggle, struggle and suffering in your life? Because we are always creating our experience no matter how big we are, no matter how young we are, or how old we are. It is always our creation. But I know for myself that there have been many times in my life where the struggle is what made it possible. And some people say, well, I want to demonstrate in ease and grace, just ease and grace. That's all I want. I don't want any, any struggle. I don't want the bumps in the road. And I'm always reminded of the EKG ma machine on people in the hospital that goes boop, boop, boop. And when it goes boop, the person is dead. So we have these experiences. And I think that there are certain opportunities that we have of establishing ourself in our life and creating our experience. And for me, there were, there were many opportunities that I had to really figure out who I was, especially when I didn't have anything to reflect back who I was. I didn't have love, I didn't have support, I didn't have food, I didn't have money, I didn't have friends, I didn't have supportive networks of caregivers, I didn't have that, 
And so left to my own devices, I had to find out who I was. I had to reach deep down inside of myself and find something because no one was offering me a helping hand. And I think there's great value in that. I would not change my past for the world. It made me fearless. It made me move out and do things, try things, even though I was pretty sure I was going to fall right on my face. And I became an expert at falling on my face. There's nothing wrong with falling on our faces. What we really get good at is getting up. Yes. So don't be afraid of putting yourself out there and having things go awry. Because you're the one setting the stage. You're the one that's exploring different avenues of beingness, and you're the one who's going to create and grab that essence of yourself that will then be with you for the rest of your life. So I encourage those who are coming into the ministry of practitionership to find your place. And don't expect everything to be all set up for you. It's not going to be. Don't expect things not to get messy. They will. Don't expect everyone to like you because they won't. And don't expect everything that you do to live up to the unrealized, un unreasonable expectation of perfection as a spiritual being now that you think you have to be because you never will. <laughs> You're never going to live up to that. They call that in psychology idealized images. And we have this image of, okay, now I'm a practitioner, now I'm a minister. And, you know, people say I shouldn't swear and, and I shouldn't do all kinds of things. That's not me. So, so we have this idealized image, this unreasonable unre expectation of what spiritual is. And we so often fall flat because we're us. But it was Carl Rogers that said, who you are is good enough if you would only be it openly. If you would stop hiding who you are if you would stop trying to be who you think you should be and just be who you are and go full out, then it would be enough. It'll carry you through. And frankly, that's the only thing that will carry you through. Because when we try to live up to other people's expectations and we become someone that we are not, then we are shallow, we are empty. And then even if people do say, wow, that's really great, you're doing a great job, we go, no, no we're not, because we know that we're not being authentic. We're not being us. We're only being the model that we've come up with as a coping mechanism in life to present to the world so that we'll be safe, so that we will get the approval and the security of the outside experience, but deep down inside we know that that's not us. And the whole reason that we masked ourselves with someone else is that we didn't trust being who we are. We held on to this idea that said, I'm not okay. I'm not good enough. I've got a black mark against my soul. They drummed that into me when I was a kid, that, that I was not God's favorite at all. God loved to screw around with me. And I know that, but I can't show it to you, so I'll pretend to be someone else. I know no faster way to the darkness, the darkness inside of us, than to abandon the only thing we have, which is us, to try to be someone that we think we should be, because who we are is not okay. And you know, when we do that kind of thing, we have a whole psychological pattern that happens. We have a belief that we're not okay, and so we move into life and set the stage because we are so creative and so powerful in life that we set the stage and we, we write the script and we, we uh, move into the theater and we people it with actors that will create the same experience of not enoughness or not okayness over and over and over again. And then instead of breaking through, we break down. And a lot of times people will come into my office and they'll give me this wonderful scenario about how things were done to them or not done for them or how the, the circumstances changed. And I'll look at them and go, that's a great story, but when have you felt this way before? Oh, I feel that way a lot. 
I feel that way at work. I feel that way at home. I feel that way in my relationship. I felt that way as a kid. So what we're doing is we're creating this amazing scenario so that we can feel that way because that's the only way we know to be safe. And I tell you, it's not safe to be that way. We think it's safe, but it is not safe. It is much better to put yourself out there, fall flat on your face, and get up all covered with mud and do it again and do it again and do it again. Because when we keep ourselves safe, when we hold ourselves back, and then we end up feeling whatever it is, I, I've, I've been left. You know, I never, never was left in relationships. I was always the lever. I'm not going to let you leave me. You blink crooked, I'm gone. I'm not going to let myself get hurt. I'll be the first one out the door. When John, wa John and I were going to get married, I said, we can't get married. I'm a runner. And he, he smiled and he said, it's okay if you run, I'll go get you. <laughs> and that was so comforting to me that if I go into old patterns and feel like I am unlovable and therefore have to get away from the person who is coming up with the love, that that won't destroy what we're working on, what we're building. That he'll simply go beyond that and come and get me. And because of that, we've been married almost 30 years, you know, and, and still, I could be a runner, yeah. So we don't automatically have a place for us in the world. It's not all set up. We don't get a, a crown or a, a stole that will be put on the practitioners in a few weeks and all of a sudden everything is set. No, 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 no. This is not the end of the journey. This is the beginning of the journey. And the journey is not pretty. The spiritual path is not angels singing and trumpets playing and the light coming down. It's not like that. It's messy because there are things that we are bringing with us that need to get cleaned out. If we're demonstrating reoccurring patterns where we feel anything less than worthy, thank you, Breezy, that was beautiful, where we feel anything less than perfect, whole, and complete, God in form as us, magnificent, glorious, divine us, if we are demonstrating anything like that, it's time to clean that up. It's time to have the courage to look at it. And as long as we say, okay, well now we're spiritual beings because we go to a spiritual center and we have to be spiritual now, then we are covering up the true gift that is us, covering it up by what we think we should be, have, and do. And it doesn't help. It absolutely doesn't help. It's a neurotic pattern. And I do it, and I know if I do it after my decades of therapy and decades of work on myself, I know that we all do it. And what I want to offer to you by way of saying to my newest licensed practitioners who I know have a little fear about their future, is that who you are is not only good enough, it is magnificent. And you don't have to try to people please, you don't have to look for the easy route, you don't have to judge yourself by whether or not there's a white dove floating down on you. <laughs> you are spiritual. You're not spiritual enough because there are no gradations of spirit. There is no quantifying spirit. You are spirit. And because you are spirit, you are spiritual. You're never going to get more holy than this. It's not going to happen. You're never going to get any better than this. I love that movie with Jack Nichols where he was a crazy person and he went to his therapist and said, what if this is as good as it gets? And that's the truth. This is as good as it gets. Anything that feels less than joy-filled is all about you. It's not the circumstances. The circumstances are simply a reflection of all of the patterns going on inside of your head. And the patterns so often come from, I'm not good enough, I'm not holy enough, I'm not advanced enough, I haven't taken enough classes yet, I haven't learned spiritual mind treatment, my treatments don't sound like Barbara's treatments, so they must not be good enough. No, that's all caca. That is, it's, it's all, and that's because of the thousands and thousands of people watching online. It's, it's all a bunch of crap going on inside of our head. And when we feel that way, then we will, through the magnificent power that we have, pick the perfect and right person to be in our life. 
and we'll pick that perfect and right situation to unfold. And then when the moment is there of us having a chance to bust out of that and say, I will not be ruled by my parents, by my past, by my circumstances, by what I have. I will know who I am inside and break through that. Instead of breaking through, so often we break down and we fall down and we pull back and we go into our old patterns. Oh, poor me. I guess I wasn't meant to be a practitioner. I guess I wasn't meant to be this kind of a person or that kind of a person. And I want to say to you, don't fall into that trap that this is as good as you get because you are magnificent. You are the essence of the light and the love and the power and the glory of God itself right here and right now. And if we will let that out, we can change the world. We can absolutely change the world simply by being who we are right now, by not faltering, by surging forward, even if we think that we're going to fall. Remember that movie with um, Eddie Murphy? And he's got the, the something, he's got to walk off the cliff and he's got to carry it to the other side and there's nothing there but he's got to carry it to the other side. And so he steps out, and it's not until he steps off the cliff that he sees these crystal pillars that show up just as he leaves one and puts his weight forward for the next one, which seems like it's empty, the other pillar shows up. So even when we feel like we're stepping off the abyss and we're just gonna fall, we have to be willing to take that hit. You know, I've fallen flat on my face so many times that I don't care anymore. I've been laughed at by people. I've been threatened by people. I've been told by a lot of people why I can't be here, why I'm leading you all to hell, how we're all going to burn forever, and I'm going, well, your heaven or my hell. Okay, I'll take my hell. until it just doesn't matter anymore. I don't care, you see me all prettied up on Sunday and then you come here at seven o'clock on Sunday morning, you see me in my pajamas. You come over on Friday afternoon, you see me all sweaty and dirty and muddy, chasing my dog, you know, trying to, to, to get it together in the world. I don't care. I don't go, oh, I've got to do all of this before people can see me. This is just how I am. And those of you who have known me for years, you know that I have many different faces. And I don't care. Whichever face I've got, you're lucky to have it. <laughs> John and I are going to INTA this coming week, and we're doing a workshop on church growth because you might notice that this size center, period, in this movement is one of the big centers. But this size center in a town of 80,000 is pretty much unheard of. And so they wanna know, what's your trick? What do you have that I can have? And John and I are talking about that, and, and I think one of the things that really makes this center what it is, is our willingness just to be us. You may have noticed we're not nice people. <laughs> I'm not trying to be nice. I'm trying to be clear. Sometimes John is cranky. You may have noticed that. Sometimes he's abrupt. So what? So what? Your reaction is your problem. It's true. Your reaction to anything is yours. <laughs> we have comments going on, yeah. I remember my teacher, Rocking Bear, once said, the worst thing you can do is call me nice. He says, I am not nice. He says, I hold up a mirror and a light. What you see is you. And so we don't have to be burdened by that because what is nice other than to try to be something and package it in such a way that someone else will be okay with it? There are a lot of people that are not okay with me. There are a lot of people that are not okay with you. There are a lot of people that are not okay with this center for a myriad reasons. And if I'm concerned about the people that don't care for what I believe, then I'm gonna be lost. I don't care, you, you, my teachings are guaranteed. If you don't like them, you can have your own life back. 
And some people leave and they get their old problems back because that's what they're creating. But if we can say there is something special going on here, that this center is a special center because for the most part, part we are all walking our walk. We are not trying to say things that make us look good. We're not trying to present a false persona to the world. We're just real and sometimes we're up and sometimes we're down. Sometimes we're washing dishes in the kitchen and sometimes we're being magnificent for thousands and thousands and thousands of people watching us online. That's what makes us special. But you can't be afraid that you're not good enough if you want to be authentic. You can't be afraid that that, that came out wrong or you didn't do it quite right because whatever you did was the perfect and right thing to happen. If someone comes up to you, and I'm talking to you practitioners again, if someone comes up to you and asks for help, whatever you give them is exactly what they need. Whatever you give them is exactly what they need because they drew that from you and that they're creating exactly what they need. Whatever you're getting out of this talk today is exactly what you need. And what one person is getting is completely different than what somebody else is getting because you're getting what you need. So whatever it is we do is the perfect and right thing to do. However we show up is the perfect and right way for us to show up. The flip side of that is that we as practitioners strive to be as clear and open as possible. And if we fall flat, we fall flat. Well, I was up in the circle of prayer and that person came up to me now last month and this month they came up and looked at me and said, oh, it's you, and they went to someone else. Oh, I must be a horrible practitioner. No, you strive to be as clear and open about the presence of God manifest as us right here and right now. And if you do that, miracles will show up. Miracles will show up. We went to... Um, uh, to Mentone, Alabama, and saw Edwin this week. And Edwin didn't know about our global ministry, so I was very happy to, to brag on us. Told her that we had 115,000 pages opened on our website last month. Told her that Bulgaria and China are our big countries this month. Go Bulgaria! We have got a presence in Bulgaria. They show up in the top five every month. And that we have people all over the world that are learning science of mind principles through our website. Here's a bit of news. John just got permission from DeVores, who owns the copyright on Five Steps to Freedom, for us to translate it into Spanish and make it available on our website for free. Yeah. Because it is our intention to transform the Spanish-speaking communities of the world as well as the Russian-speaking. I don't know why, that's just where our focus goes. And so we told Edwin all about it and she had never been to our website. And when we got home, she sent a note that said, oh my, <laughs> congratulations on your international ministry and she is putting on her website, prosperityproducts.com, a link to our website. Yeah. Because Edwin has retired, and she wants people to still be able to go somewhere and get spiritual food. And I said to her at lunch, I said, I don't know how all this happened. We just do what we do. We just keep plodding along. Week after week after week, we show up. We do the best we can. We open up the doors. And now here, 25 years later, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of people joining this community, watching this talk on Tuesday, participating in the prosperity class. I've got put me on the list sheets coming in from all around the world just because we've trusted that what we believe is true, that we can have miracles be an everyday occurrence, that there is a power and a presence within us that will transform all circumstances and conditions. Ernest said, such is the power of right thinking, that it cancels and erases everything unlike itself. 
It is the answer to every question and the solution to every problem. It is like the dawn of eternal truth bursting, for the bursting forth through the clouds of obscurity with the glorious dawn of day. Wow. All we have to do is believe that and then keep putting one foot in front of the other. And while we do that, our lives change and the lives of all of those around us transform. We can't afford to be afraid. We can't afford to hesitate. We can't afford to be embarrassed. We can't afford to let people go by without sharing that there is a better way to live. And if we fall on our face, we fall on our face. We just get back up, dust ourselves off, and keep going. But I believe that there is something amazing happening in Asheville, North Carolina, at Center for Spiritual Living Asheville. I think we've got 25 years of history and experience, and that we have now the best group of practitioners ever turned loose on this planet, the best teachers, and the best teaching. And I am so proud to be a part of this center. We're not screwing around. We're changing the world. Yeah. And so it is. Hi, I'm Barbara Waterhouse. And I'm John Waterhouse. Thank you for watching this message today. Through our website, cslashville.org, we have over a thousand messages, classes, and new thought books all to download at no charge to anyone. Producing this incredibly valuable collection of ideas is really making a difference in the world. It's changing lives everywhere. Please go to our website, cslashville.org, and click the Donate button. You can support this life-changing ministry, and when you do, we'll send you a note of thanks and also put you on our daily prayers. By doing this, you're helping to raise the consciousness of people across the entire globe. We're changing lives together, those lives that are being more prosperous, more healthy, and more joyous. Thank you for being a part of this important work and supporting what we do here at CSL Asheville. Thank you.